Hi guys, welcome back to Elevate Chem. I'm Jesse and this is the 2014 VCE Chemistry Exam Walkthrough. And we're covering in this episode questions 1 through 10 of the multiple choice section. Getting right into it, I'm not going to spend too much time messing around, but I am going to give a little bit of insight when I can. So question one. The expression for the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is, well, I'm going to, that means that the reaction is proceeding in this direction, in which case the left-hand side is our products, in which case they will be on the numerator. So I'm expecting H2O and CH4 to be on the numerator. That means my possible answers are these two right here, and my H2O has a coefficient of 2 at the front, which means 1. The correct answer for question 1 is A. Moving on to question two, if an inert gas is added to an equilibrium system at a constant temperature and constant volume, the concentration of hydrogen will, based upon this question here, because notice that it says use the following information to answer questions one and two, uh, but it actually doesn't matter because if we're talking about an inert gas added to an equilibrium system, constant temperature, constant pressure, then nothing actually changes no matter what the system, so it will be C, regardless of the actual reaction itself. Um, question three, which one of the following statements about 10.0 mils of 0.1 mole HCl and 10 mils of 0.1 mole CH3Q, also known as ethanoic um, acid, solutions is true. I've got options A, B, C, and D. And ultimately, guys, the answer is going to end up being B. And the reason why is each solution will react completely with 10 mils of 0.1 mole NaOH. The reason why I know that is because the moles of NaOH that would react from here, moles equals C times V equals 0 0.1 times 0 0.01 equals 0 0.001. That's how many moles they have to react. And I can obtain the same molar value for both the HCl and the CH3Q. This assumes that both of them will um, continue to react, that there isn't an equilibrium reaction taking place here, but in this instance we can assume that is true, so the answer is B. Moving on to question 4 now. If solution X has a pH of 3 and solution Y has a pH of 6, we can conclude that H plus in solution X is a thousand times that of H plus in solution Y, etc, etc, the other answers. Now we know that pH is based around log base 10, and this means that for every increase or decrease in pH, the amount of the concentration of H plus is either multiplied by 10 or divided by 10. So what we've done here is an increase of 3 in our pH, and that means we're going to have an increase in 10 to the 3 times of H plus, and that means the answer is A. None of the other answers were really particularly applicable as they didn't have this 10 to the power of value. Half and twice aren't really things we come across in pH, and you yeah, did have to be aware though that this stronger acid was trying to trick you. Question five, the pH of the following acid solutions were measured using a pH meter. The acid solutions that will have the lowest pHs, well when looking at this question for question five, the pH of a solution is dependent upon the H3O plus present in the solution. Now all of them have the same concentration, and that means all of them are going to have the same 0.1 molar concentration of weak monoprotic acids. So the solution with the lowest pH will have the highest concentra will have the highest concentration of H3O plus and be the strongest acid. And in this case, we can look at the acid with the highest Ka value. You can actually look at your data table for that, guys, and we find that this is to be nitrous acid. So again, look at your data table. Look at the Ka values and you'll find that nitrous acid has the highest Ka out of all of these acids. And because they're the same concentration, that means that's the one you want to pick. The volumes don't have anything to do with it. Jumping down to question six, the diagram below represents the titration curve uh, for the reaction between a particular acid and a particular base. So the equation that Bevis represents the reaction described by the titration curve is, we've got a whole bunch of reactions there. The one that I want to pick is reaction is multiple choice option A. The reason why we have an initial pH that starts above 10, there's an equivalence point that is slightly less than 7, and the final pH is below 2. 
all of this indicates that I'm starting that I'm titrating with a strong acid, which is going to give me a final uh, pH, which is very low. I've got a relatively weak base here, and that means that these two substances certainly line up. Moving on to question seven. The volume of 2.5 mL hydrochloric acid is required to react completely with 40 mL of 0.5 molar calcium hydroxide. Now, in order to do this, you did actually have to do some calculations. So we've got that 2 HCl plus CaOH2 goes to CaCl2 plus 2H2O. I could be writing in states, but I'm not given any marks for them because it's a multiple choice question. I don't get any marks for my working out, so I'm going to leave that out. Now, my moles of CaOH2 reacting is equal to my 0 0.5, which is my concentration, times by my volume, which is 0 0.04, and that is equal to 0 0.02 moles. Therefore, the moles of HCl using this ratio here of 2 to 1 is equal to 2 times 0 0.02 equals 0 0.04 moles. So that's the moles of HCl. And therefore, taking this up over here, the volume required is equal to the moles 0 0.04 divided by the actual concentration, which is given as 0.25, and that gives us a value of 160 mil from a conversion of 0.16 liters. So that gives us answer D. Question eight. When hydrochloric acid is added to aluminum sulfide, highly toxic gas, hydrogen sulfide is evolved. That's right here. The equation for the reaction is given just there. If excess hydrochloric acid is added, which means we're going to be pushing the reaction to the right, Al2S3 will be our limiting reagent to 0 0.2 moles of aluminium sulfide, then the volume of hydrogen sulfide produced at standard laboratory conditions will be. Well, we know uh, from the question that excess hydrochloric acid is used, so this is our limiting reagent, and we know that there's 0 0.2 moles. And looking at the ratio here, we can see that there's a 1 to 3 ratio between these um, substances. And that means there will be 0 0.6 moles of H2S gas produced. Now, in order to get the volume, we're going to use uh, the values at SLC. Or you can just use your data booklet. And we know that from the data booklet that at SLC, the value is 24.5 litres per mole. And we can simply multiply that by 0 0.6 moles. And this will give us 14.7 litres, which corresponds to answer D. So all I did was I grabbed the litres per mole value for SLC, standard laboratory conditions, and I grabbed that from the data booklet. Question 9. An aerosol can with a volume of 300 mils contains 2.8 grams of propane gas as a propellant. The warning label says the aerosol may explode at temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius and it's asking what is the pressure in the can. So what I'm going to have to do here is to work out my pressure uh, given all of the other components for the standard um, ideal gas equation. So the ideal gas equation says PV equals NRT. We're solving for pressure. So that means we're looking for P equals NRT on V. Unfortunately, I'm not given the moles, so I have to work that out from this mass given here. So the moles of propane gas, which is C3H8, is equal to my mass, 2.80, divided by the molar mass. You can, again, find this using your periodic table, and you'll find it to be 44 grams per moles. So that means we obtain 0 0.0636 moles of propane gas. Substituting in my moles, my volume, and my temperature gives me P equals 0 0.636 times 8.314, obtained from our data booklet, our universal gas constant, times my temperature, 60 degrees. Again, I need to convert this into Kelvin, which is going to be 60 
plus 273. And I'm going to divide that by the volume. It's 300 mils. I have to turn that into liters. So it's going to be 0 0.3000. And that pops out with an answer of 5.87 by 10 to 2 kPa. And that corresponds to answer C. Answer A was given just in case you didn't convert this volume. Which one of the reactions of hydrochloric acid below is a redox reaction? Now, since HCl was the common reactant in all of these equations, HCl is present in all of them. In a redox reaction, the number of H hydrogens or Cl's has to change. So this means that option A is correct. And the reason why, the oxidation number of H, it decreases from plus 1 to 0. And we know that because in HCl, Cl has an ox will have a charge of minus 1, or an oxidation state of minus 1. That means H has a charge of plus 1. And when it turns into its gaseous state by itself, H is neutral. So that means H has gone from a positive oxidation state to a less oxidation state. And that means there's a redox reaction occurring here. Fantastic, guys. In next episode, we'll be covering questions 11 through 30 of the multiple choice section. See you guys in the next episode.